Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with your hosts, Amy Babinchak, James Kernan, and Carl Polichuk. Produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts community, we're dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. This podcast is sponsored by the Small Biz Thoughts technology community. Check us out at smallbizthoughts.org. Forums, templates, and checklists are just the start. Our community includes all of the best-selling books on managed services in all available formats, plus free training, members-only programs, and the best business training available to managed service providers anywhere. Plus, we have weekly live members-only Zoom calls. The average member saves more than 200% of their membership cost each year. We are totally dedicated to your success. Just because you're in business for yourself doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Join us today at smallbizthoughts.org. All right, welcome back. This is James Kernan with Kernan Consulting live on the SMB Community Podcast. I'm really excited about today's guest. Uh, the guest today, we're really going to talk about sales process and a revamped uh, sales process that uh, that this gentleman has implemented in his business and several other clients of mine have, have used this and was really excited to share this with everybody today. But uh, today we've got uh, Matthew from Avenir IT out of Winnipeg, Canada. Hey, Matthew, welcome to the program. Hey, James. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. You bet. So uh, so we'll talk about sales process and what that looks like um, and then what other versions that you've had in the past. We'll talk about that in a minute. But before we kind of dive into that, I want I kind of want the you're a, an interesting, dynamic personality. So I want people to get to know you a little bit. Why don't you tell uh, tell the audience a little bit more about you as a person and your your kind of your history coming into the industry? Interesting dynamic. I'll 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 take that as a as a compliment. I, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. Um, how I got into the industry. So actually, you know, funny story, um, or maybe not that funny. Um, I've kind of always been an entrepreneur at heart. I, I never really liked working for anybody. I've never been good for, at working for anybody. Yeah. Uh, and I started my first business when I was thirteen. Um, called it Rent a Teen because I wasn't old enough to hold a real job yet. Uh, and I really wanted to, you know, I was interested in just making money. I want to go, you know, buy my own candy and my own, my own Slurpees. I'm not sure you guys have that in the U S uh, slushes or, or whatever. Um, and so, um, so that was, that was kind of my, my big motivation. And, 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 um, so I, I had built a small business, um, doing odd jobs for people who couldn't do it. Um, and, and actually had a monthly recurring revenue at that point too, which I didn't even know what that was. Um, I got into IT because I graduated high school and my parents uh, insisted on the importance of post-secondary. And my best friend was going in IT, so I figured, hey, what the heck, uh, let's do that. So that's what I did. Um, graduated from that program, uh, uh, held a couple jobs. Uh, one of them was for an eco economic development uh, 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 organization. Um, and after a couple of years of that, I... Uh, I convinced them to let me start my own business and have them be my first client. Um, and so that was back in 2007, 2008, around then. Wow, 2007. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, cool, cool. I always love asking how people get into the industry. And, you know, many, many of you are very technically minded, like, like you, Matthew. And uh, it's kind of natural, um, you know, taking apart things in the house and then, you know, forming your own business and acquiring clients. One of the things I, I always have admired about you is you're obviously very technically minded, but you're also super creative. And uh, I love the sales and marketing of stuff that, that you guys do. But before we dive into that, why don't you tell everybody a little bit more about your business, about who you guys have become now? So tell everybody a little bit more about Avenir IT. Yeah, so... Um... So like I said, yeah, I started in 2000, 2008, or sorry, 2007, 2008, um, really didn't know much at all about business. So, so you know, mostly just the tech going to work. Um, it didn't take long until there was two of us, um, but again, two very, very, you know, tech-minded people. Yeah. Um, I had my bubble. I didn't want anybody in it, uh, you know. Um, yeah. One of those typical um, 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 
tech profile, maybe. Can I say that? Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, as we kind of grew almost accidentally over the next few years, as we, as we took on more and more clients, um, all through referrals or just by luck, um, yeah, I, 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 there was a moment, um, you know, probably four or five years in where I realized, hey, you know what, there's, there's maybe something here. Um, and, uh, and maybe it's time that I focus more on business growth and building out the company. Um, so I, it feels like pretty quickly, you know, within the last five or six years now, we, we have a team of about 25, um, about 17 or 18 of those are techs. Um, and, and we're, we're, we're growing really quick. Um, I'm not sure how much more details you want me to go into, but, yeah. but there, there was definitely a shift at, at some point in there where, where, you know, now if I try to do some, some kind of tech work, I, I managed to mess it up. Um, my team doesn't want me to touch any kind of IT stuff anymore. Uh, my focus for the last six, seven years have been really more, you know, the, the going out there, meeting people, focusing on business growth, marketing, sales, uh, those types of things where I'm almost completely not needed in the company. Um, mm -hmm. almost, uh, it's hard not to be, but, uh, but yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So clearly you've made that transition that, that many of us are still working on, right. Of, you know, now you're working on the business, not in the business. And that was, uh, I think when you made that shift, uh, four or five years ago, you know, you've you've really catapulted your growth and the dynamics of your business have really changed. So um, anyway, so let's talk about let's talk about sales process. Sure. So, you know, we've all been in the industry for a long time or, or most of the listeners have been. And most of the time, the sales process are kind of longer and drawn out. It involves multiple meetings, multiple assessments. Uh, you're trying to create value, you know, that all makes sense. Uh, but you guys were, um, I think you've uncovered something unique and, and, and simplified. So you want to talk about your revamped sales process and what that's yeah. done for your business? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a couple, there were a couple of moments. Um, so, so this new sales process, I mean, it's, it's not even a year old. Um, I think we've been doing this now for about eight or nine months. Um, but but it came after a few things and so and so um you know james i am part of your mastermind group as you know uh and uh and there were um there were a couple events where we had speakers kind of uh come out and and, and speak about um value driven sales as opposed to you know selling the value of what you're selling not so much the product right and you know, at the time, I thought I had a really great proposal. You know, it was it was colorful. It had pictures. It, it shared our core values. It was already different um, than what the market was doing. At least it was when I first implemented five or six years ago. But when I looked deeper, it was like, okay, you know what? Um, it's the same. It, it really, at the end of the day, the content was the same. And so we had um, engaged an outbound sales company. And, and once we had engaged that outbound sales, um, you know, the, the sales process became harder. We were getting a lot more no's. We were getting a lot more people that were just interested to know more. You know, they, they didn't want that long process. They didn't want, you know, the, 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 the network analysis and everything else that we had been taught as an IT company to do as far as the full lengthy process. Um, so that was kind of um, the, sorry, James, you know what, I'm going, I'm going totally in the wrong direction here. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good. And it's important. It's an important part because, you know, essentially to recap what you just said is you, you outsourced a telemarketing company to create first time appointments and to engage in the sales process. And you just found you, you need to, you need to figure out a way to shorten the process instead of keeping it long and lengthy, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So my brain is going in like 12 different directions trying to explain <laughs> this one thing. And so, so maybe I'm getting a little too excited and, and, and it's, I'm jumping all over the place. Um, but essentially what I, what I, what I discovered. So before we had engaged this outbound sales company, you know, closing deals was easy. They were referrals. They were people calling us because they had pain points. So, yeah. so they were like, you know, they're, they're, they were ready to make a switch. Once we hired this outbound company, we, we, we noticed that sales processes got a lot harder. 
um, because now we have to, to jump in there and convince them that, hey, we are better than who they're currently using. Yeah. And, and so the old approach um, was a lot harder to do. Convincing them to let us do a network analysis was a lot harder to do. Telling them that I can't give them pricing until I've done all these other steps was a lot harder to do. Um, but when we were able to do that, just the whole process was extremely lengthy. Uh, a lot of my time was being lost. A lot of my technical time was being lost. I was spending full afternoons putting reports together um, and going there just to get a, uh, you know what, you're too expensive. Or, hey, my current guy does the same thing. Um, and so, and so it, it became really, really painful. Something else too, that, that, you know, we were looking, um, you know, at, at potentially replacing our PSA and our CRM and, and all these other things internally. And whenever we found platforms that didn't share pricing or that we had to go through multiple steps to get pricing, uh, we walked away from it because it just wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't simple. Um, on the topic of simplicity, um, it seems like every single MSP will try to tell prospects and clients that, you know, um, they're easy to talk to or they're simple and those types of things. They, they try to sell simplicity, but then they go to, to, to go through the sales process and they add so many levels of complexity that confuses the prospect and the prospect says no. So, yeah, so we, we decided to uh, go a whole different route and to really simplify everything. We post our pricing online. We post our services online. Our, our proposals are pre-printed, the professionally printed proposals, and it's all done in the first meeting. Um, we don't ask for the network analysis. If they want us to do it, we'll do it. Um, but typically they're, they're not interested. Um, you know, they just want to know what can we do? How are we different? How much do we cost? Um, so let me, let, me, let, me, let me dissect what you just said, because you said something really important there. So you basically get a lead, you schedule your first meeting, and that's it. You have one meeting with them, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 That, so our, our, yeah. That, that's amazing because normally, you know, what uh, with all the assessment tools out there and all the sales training in the industry and, you know, I'm going to make fun of myself a little bit here because I've done a lot of the sales training myself <laughs> over the past 15 years. So value-based sales training is really all about building the value of your business you need to have multiple meetings with the prospect. You need to help diagnose the pain for them because not all the time do they necessarily know what their pain is. Then you come back with network diagrams, pain points, vulnerabilities, and you sell to that pain. But unfortunately, it typically takes about three meetings to get through and the sales process could easily take a month. OK, and what I what I love about what Matthew has figured out, and, and I think there's also a big shift in the industry where the buyers are much more educated today. They all know what managed services are. You know, years back, we used to have to explain what managed services was and get the prospect through that learning curve. Today, I think they're so much more educated and it's really easy to sell something to someone when they already know what they want. Exactly. And that's what you figured out. You just come in and make the experience really simple, just like buying a Tesla or just like buying an Apple, I, you know, uh, an iPhone online, you know, a couple clicks and you're done and you're engaged, you know? So, so, and, and I, I think, I think there's, there's, there's a lot to that, right? I mean, yes. I mean, there's a lot more, um, to it than just kind of changing the process and doing the one meeting. So, you know, our proposal is professionally designed and it's not proposy. It's very, you know, there's lots of color, there's lots of graphics. The way that we present our services is very, very different. Yep. Stuff that were that we were getting at at prospect meetings, which were, you know, kind of uh, you know, I, I would raise an eyebrow at was, oh, let me guess, is the next step going to be a network analysis? Whereas when we first started doing network analysis, like you know, 10 years ago. They were excited about it. Hey, I'm not going to, you know, give me any pricing until you've done this so that I can understand this and blah, blah, blah. Like you say, they, they are more educated. That's not what they're looking for. They know what they want. They know what frustration right. points they have. Um, and now we're doing the same thing as every single IT company out there. So what is setting us apart? Absolutely nothing. Um, 
and so and so so this one meeting so so our pipeline got reduced from you know an insane amount of steps down to like three steps you know it, it's it's our meet and greet meeting is the same as our sales meeting is the same as our discovery meeting yeah. all bundled up into one and so so we'll still start and talk about frustrations and those types of things and we'll bring up those frustrations when we go through a proposal um but our proposal, you know, again, is 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 very different. Uh, whereas we don't go with, you know, uh, something else that we're taught to do right at the beginning with with a lot of of different vendors is to create, you know, the 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 good, better, best uh, columns with all these check boxes and everything else. Well, the problem is you're not standing out if your good, better, best is the same as every other I, I, every other IT company out there. Um, so we moved away from the model as well. We moved away from, you know, the recommended network analysis model. We moved away from, you know, custom printed proposals and trying to just keep it simple. Um, because that is one of our, one of our, one of our selling points is simplicity. But if my sales process is complicated, <laughs> what does it say about who we are? Right. Yeah. So, so let me give you a little bit more credit. You're such a, a humble person. I always get a kick out of this. Um, you, you did uncover how to really simplify the sales process and make it map, map that. Um, you make it a lot easier for your telemarketing team to set up appointments. And uh, but, but big picture, I think there is a lot of value-based selling still that you use because number one, everything from your website to your core values to your, your business has tons of credibility because all the awards that you've won, all the publicity that you have have received, uh, people can find you in the community online really easily because you're out there speaking at events. Uh, you've been written up in multiple publications. You've won multiple awards as one of the top MSPs uh, in in uh, in Canada. So uh, you know. So give yourself some credit there. Uh, I also think it's interesting. You've got a, a really fun but professional sense of humor. And people do business with people. And that first meeting is not over Zoom or Teams. It's a face-to-face -face meeting. You're typically the one proposing what you do. Uh, but I think you do it in a real dynamic fashion because everything from your very creative and artsy uh, graphical presentation your your proposal presentations what about six seven pages um yeah i mean it's um well it's, it's two pages per service um and one page is 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 has no words on it it's more like a picture or some kind of art to represent what we're selling um yeah. but yeah. yeah 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 it's got a lot of graphics on it and images and i think that's really smart you've got bright colors on it so it's a professionally done proposal and it kind of matches uh, your personality, but you also have a lot of credibility in the in the community. So I think those things all help build value. So people people research, you know, who they're meeting with before they meet with you. I hope and believe all of you listeners know that. Uh, and you know, I think ninety eight percent of people get Googled before they end up buying from that person. So they're going to find a lot of good stuff on you guys out there in the industry. And it's not like you are a mom and pop shop that just popped up uh, out of the back of a trunk. You guys have been around for a little while. So I think you've got a rich history. So give yourself some credit on that standpoint. And I think as a result of you building that base of credibility, now you can step in and simplify the sales process and, and tell everybody kind of more of the results of what you found over the past three to six months since you've really launched this and rolled this out? So, um, so there's been a couple things. So we actually use the exact same proposal when we, when, when my account reps will go out and talk to our existing clients for their, for their, for their quarterly reviews. Um, so it's really, really helped us a ton to, to make it, I don't want to say easier to sell because, because we're not trying to milk our clients, right? That, that's not our purpose. Um, we really, really want to be able to, to do a better job showing and, and having our existing clients understand the value of the stuff that we do. And so it was really, really hard prior to this proposal format to be able to show the value and sell cybersecurity. It's still a pain point, even in today's world, which is crazy considering how much of the stuff we hear in the news, 
about how to sell and upsell cybersecurity to our clients. And so, so that's been um, phenomenal at, at helping us really, you know, connect with our clients, make them understand what we're doing and why it's important to do what we do and to put these cybersecurity stuff in place. So that's, that's kind of something that happened um, that, I, that I didn't expect to happen. Um, so that's been great. The second thing that's, that it's done um, is for the prospects. So, so we're not getting nearly as many no's. Um, so the, 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 the outbound sales team that we have, um, a lot of them um, were closing you know, they're a bit lengthier, but but we're closing a lot more of them or at least talking to them for a heck of a lot longer because now it's like, hey, wait a minute, and, you know, because of how we're selling that value and they're more interested to, to have that talk and review things and those types of things. So so we've definitely seen a, a huge improvement um, in there as well. Um, you know, we're, we're closing a lot more. We're growing. Um, um, sometimes I feel almost too quick. Uh, but it's a good problem to have. Um, and so it's been, uh, it's been great. It's been, it's been interesting. Um, but that's only until, until this process isn't new anymore. And so, and so we'll have to, you know, stay ahead of the game and, and make sure that we, we keep on changing it and coming up on your podcast is probably not a great idea to keep that new and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so can you elaborate a little bit of what you're comfortable with? You know, you're, you're such an example of success not just in the mastermind community, uh, but in in general across the United States, again, because you, you've won so many awards, but elaborate a little bit more on some of the other things that you're doing in marketing to give visibility to the company. Yeah, so um, we've, we've been asked um, more and more, it seems like every year, to, to be more present in the local media. Uh, which has been really, really helpful. Um, you know, COVID hit everybody really, really hard. So a lot of these live events, um, you know, hasn't really been happening anymore. A lot less, you know, of, of the chamber stuff in the last few years. Although that's that's picking up again. Um, we have, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to do a few sponsorships a year. Um, we have a lot of uh, non-for-profit clients, um, um, some of the bigger ones, you know, in our city, which is great. So So we'll set aside some budgets and a certain percentage to, to give back to the community, which has been really great. Um, you know, our social media um, is has been a really great thing for us too. Um, you know, we're going to be expanding on that quite a bit. I think this year uh, uh, we just we had a new hire start um, that I think is bringing in some really really great ideas there. Um, you know, and and the usual stuff, right? I mean, I mean the the mail outs and and the newsletters. Actually, we don't do newsletters. We moved away from that, and we're doing um, more of a magazine style. Uh, format looks more professional, um, you know, print, um, print, print printed newsletters, which historically, you know, it's obviously more expensive, but people have always historically gotten better results from that anyway. But I think that's all great. And the and the key thing is it's just not one thing. You do a lot of different things as part of an overall master plan uh, that you have quarter over quarter or or on an annual basis. Right. Right. And. And we try, we try as much as possible to be um, original. And I know it's harder and harder to be original because there's so much great training and resources that, you know, you can have it done for you and just take it and go, um, which I think is amazing. But if you have the time and resources, I think, I think taking those tools and, and those, um, those resources and, and taking the time to make them your own um, yeah, is really important and can go a very long way. Um, you know, if you don't great copy paste it and, and go, but if you can, um, definitely spend that time. Well, I think that's a really important point of, of how you've made it your own. It's interesting. I know, you know, we've known each other for a long time. I think we met, I was speaking at a tiger paw conference way back when in Omaha, Nebraska. And I think that's where the first time I, I met you and that, that has to be what, seven years ago six, seven years ago. And, uh, and we worked together for a long time as well. But so I, I know you as a person and I know your personality. What's amazing about how you market your business is when I look at your proposal, I look at a brochure, I look at your website, I see you and it's not your picture. I just see your personality and how you word things, everything from your core values to the images, uh, the graphics that you use uh, in your marketing You've done a really good job of making it your own and making it unique. 
And I think all of us should be doing that as part of your unique selling proposition. You need to make sure that you use your personal strengths and make it your own. You know, that's that's what that people do business with people. That's what customers are looking for. So you've Perfect. done a, an excellent job. So virtual high fives on that. <laughs> virtual high fives. Hey, one last thing I wanted to say about your proposal template, if it's okay. Yeah. On one of the last pages, it's a shame that we can't show you. But if if you can understand, on one of the last pages, he lists out his different services that are available. And all it is, is you just kind of check a box with how many users you have. And it's a price per seat. But it's um, it's really simple for people to figure out what their pricing is. Uh, they can just do the math and they check the box of what service. Do you want a backup service or do you want managed IT you know, the help desk, or I think cybersecurity was the the fourth one. You kind of bundle those together, which I think is genius because it makes the experience really simple. It also eliminates, I think, a lot of the negotiation that people, you know, they the pricing is what it is. You know, when when you're aggressive and publish it, uh, you know, think about how we all buy from retail stores. You don't go in and try to renegotiate pricing. Of, of pricing when it's published online and so forth. So I think that's working really well for you, right? I think I think there's a couple things um to mention based based on all this is is you know I've I've never had to shop for IT because we are IT. So we are our own clients. So it's been great. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I had to shop for IT, it probably would suck because you know <laughs> trying to find because again it's all the same stuff and, and it's it's very technical, it's very boring, you know, those types of things. So so yeah, we put a lot of of time and effort in trying to make that process fun, uh, which which really tries to match who we are as a culture, um, you know, and, and as a business. Um, so yeah, for sure, I think I think that was that was a big part of it. I think it, it touches on some of the stuff you mentioned. Yep, that's awesome. So I know many of you are are MSP business owners like Matthew, uh, but is is it okay if if people you know want to get in touch with you? Do they just go up to your website and and take a look at how cool your website is? What's a an easy way to uh, get in touch with you if they have any questions? Yeah, that's probably the easiest. Um, just the contact page off our website. Um, it'll go to a few people. So if I'm not available, somebody else will get that, and and it'll make it to me eventually for sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so just aveneerit.com and I'll drop the link up in uh, in the podcast uh, recording as well when we drop this out on social media. So, hey, Matthew, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on, on another banner year for the company and for all your success. And I appreciate you sharing uh, with the audience today a little bit more about what you guys are doing in the business. Awesome. Thanks, James. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.